I think we can, can go further uh, and start with the next presentation. Uh, Alexandra, are you here, right? Somewhere? Oh, perfect. All right. So, no rush. Settle down, leave your things, and in the meantime, um, I will take care of the introducing you. All right? Perfect. Okay. So, in that case, let's move on to our keynote, uh, which is the future of work in Metaverse by Alexandra Sashinska, who is the product manager in Mercredo. So, the story is, in a world of a constant, uh, constant change, a group of project managers embark on a journey to explore the potential meta workrooms in enhancing their work. So, guys, brace yourself for the unexpected turns and in-depth analysis and invaluable product and strategy insights. Alexandra, the stage is yours. Okay, how does it work? Look like here. Simple as that. <laughs> Okay, uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Nice to see you all. Uh, I'm glad you came. Uh, so, okay, I'll start with a short introduction. Uh, my name is Alexandra Sashinska, and I'm a product manager in Miquido with uh, strong backgrounds with, within gamification and uh, app developments, uh, providing discovery workshops, but accidentally. Uh, right now I'm also someone who had an occasion to work within Metaverse and this presentation will include a big part of my personal opinion but also some analysis from the product perspective. Hopefully you'll enjoy. <laughs> so uh, the, title, the title is exploring the future of work in metaverse and uh, additional part is that the only constant is change but there is also planning testing and improving and it's about both startups and huge companies and uh, okay let's go uh, you probably used oculus because i've seen it also on the wolf summit event so probably part of you had an occasion. Uh, did you please raise your, raise your hands if you ever used it, okay? And those who raised their hands, did you spend at least one hour in it? Did you? Not all of you, but some of you did. So you know the hustle <laughs> then. Uh, <laughs> And it's going to be also about it. So uh, right now, maybe covered with the dust uh, because uh, of AI excitement, but uh, uh, metaverse is still here. Some of some of uh, big uh, uh, consulting companies said that it's going to finish uh, in a moment, but unexpectedly uh, there is a peak on the stock market. So. Uh, meta is still in a game mm. and when they uh, started working on Oculus and Metaversum there were huge expectations and uh, when Zuckerberg 10 years ago said that mobile is the platform of, of today uh, and now we are getting ready for the platforms of tomorrow Oculus has the chance to create the most social platform ever and change the way we work, play and communicate. So this part is going to be mostly uh, about our potential work within, uh, within Metaversum. So they believed that this virtual workspace can upgrade over Zoom calls, Slack, Microsoft Teams uh, workflows. And we had an occasion within Miquido and uh, product management team uh, to experience if this is really true. Uh, and later on, like uh, last year, right after launching uh, MetaQuest 2, uh, 
Meta said that unlike on a video chat, users are going to feel a sense of presence with others who are physically far away. And that's a huge statement because presence is kind of ephemeral quality and it's quite hard to measure it. But spoiler alert, they did it. So you can feel sense of presence within, uh, um, for example, Horizon workrooms, but there are other things about that too. And now huge quotes. So Citigroup reports last year said that Metaverse is a 13 trillion opportunity. After them, McKinsey said that around 95 of business leaders expect the Metaverse to positively impact their industries. It's nearly 100%. And the Wall Street Journal, the metaverse would change the way we work forever. And here was my question, is it about Bossware? So the software that allows company to track every movement of their remote workers? Who knows? But again, spoiler alert, there is something about it too. Uh, Gardner said that 25% of people would spend at least one hour a day in the metaverse by 2026, so they have three years left to make it work this way, because those who spend at least one hour in Oculus knows that it's a hustle, it's a hard thing. Uh, so now, the reality, after huge expectations, uh, we took an experiment. So my friend, product manager uh, Bartek Nowosielski, uh, sending you hugs from here, <laughs> Bartek, uh, he organized that for us because we wanted to check innovation. So it was last year. Uh, the team of eight product managers, we uh, chose to use hardware, hardware uh, from uh, from Oculus, so it was Quest 2, and as a software, it was Horizon Workrooms. We had this three months, and we decided to have our weekly status meetings within the Metaversum. And uh, we've had this interview with Bartosz before we started working in it, uh, and after each session, so after each one-hour meeting, we had to describe our feelings, mark on a scale, how do we feel. Mm, uh, we had to uh, mark uh, what, what was our engagement if we think that uh, this meeting was, uh, mm, that we really focused on the job that had to be done and etc. So. Uh, he was measuring the impact on productivity, engagement, and the social aspects. Also, this uh, feeling of presence of other of our uh, colleagues. So, yeah, remote work is uh, is very appreciated, and we liked we liked the aspects of sitting in the beds, just being dressed uh, properly from the upper health of our body and etc. Uh, and within this Oculus uh, setup, there are some things we cannot do uh, because it is visible within the virtual horizon room. So that was us again, people who, oh, uh, you can see mostly pixels, but this is the team, uh, and here we look like a cartoon, uh, cartoon, like, mm, I would say that we look like a, uh, some childish um, graphics, but here we are in the Horizon workrooms uh, with, uh, the, uh, with the beach view in our, uh, room, we are bottomless, so we are floating torsos, and uh, if you joined us at that moment within this virtual room, you, could, you, are, you would see that our faces are uh, emotionless, 
or that we have empty eyes. We have our voices. We move weirdly with hands and her heads. But no matter what you say, the face expression is the same. Uh, and it was very nice that you can customize parts of the room uh, or that Bartek, who is in Katowice, he is actually floating next to you uh, and he has very expressive eyebrows in this virtual world, but uh, not much more than this. So uh, Horizon Workrooms uh, uses this mixed reality um, so you can use your physical desk and you have to define the space you are going to work on and you can uh, use the option to pass through so during the meetings you can collaborate and write uh, on your uh, on your keyboards if you see it properly because that was a big issue uh, so six of us had these headsets and two of teammates team Team members were calling in regularly, just like on the Zoom calls or Hangouts. And they had this, um, those, those guys without headsets, they felt like they are calling into a meeting with people who actually are sitting in the same room. So there was something about this presence. They felt a little bit excluded. They, they had this feeling that we are there in a room all together, even though we were sitting separately in our homes. So that was this ephemeral thing that actually the designers of workrooms did properly. Uh, also, the auditory experience was great because if in this virtual room someone was sitting next to you, you could see him properly from the direction he was virtually sitting in. You could even um, high-five high this person and you would hear the clap of your hands all together. So that was, that was fun and interesting. Uh, but there is, there is a plot twist because we were very excited at first and uh, Unfortunately, we evaluated productivity poorly due to the huge lack of comfort because the headset is heavy and all the equipment, it's not that comfortable to use. So we had some typing difficulties and also physical issues like headache, dizziness. So there is something about hardware that have to be improved. And there is also another thing, and this is my personal uh, opinion and my feeling about, uh, about these avatars. And there is, mm, there is even a definition, and there were some... Uh, mm, okay, later on. <laughs> but the avatars had this uh, exp expressionless eyes, so they're their eyeballs did not move in a natural way. So you, could, you couldn't say if someone is looking at you or staring, staring in a point of the space when you were sitting together in these workrooms. And this lack of expression on the face, it was freaking me out a little bit. So there is something in it. If you see this... Uh, part of an article, so the world's most advanced realistic robot is here to terrify you. This is called Uncanny Valley uh, um, Syndrome, or um, so this is, this is the emotional response to human-like, very realistic animations, avatars and robots. And this is the graph that explains you, so this uh, appears at any level of human likeness. So you have industrial robots and humanoid robots, uh, which are becoming more and more scary or weird to us. The same with stuffed animals. So at any level of degree of human likeness, uh, and it works also with uh, cosmetically atypical people, 
uh, there is this feeling of our uncertainty or, or um, weirdness about an object which is too much human-like, but not exactly. So this is something I felt when it comes to these virtual avatars who are speaking with the voice of your friends, but their faces are emotionless. And so even if they laugh or they are uh, mad on the other side of Oculus, the avatar is not changing their expression. So uh, also before digital era, it was called Frankenstein complex. And right now, uh, um, Professor Masahiro Mori, who worked on this concept in 70s, he called it Uncanny Valley. Uh, and for sure you can avoid it. It might be also uh, a problem within generations. So maybe I felt this weirdness of the situation. Maybe Gen Z wouldn't have the same issue. And there are some design principles uh, to avoid it. And if we ever work with human-like avatars, graphics or robots, we need to test it to check if the if our end users are going to like the character or not. So also, a robot may look uncanny uh, when, uh, being, when having uh, a robotic voice, but if a robot has human voice, it might uh, appear as a scary thing to humans. The same is when robot looks like human, but have a synthetic voice. It's better because if we match two of them, then the scariness level uh, within the, the user or someone who is going to contact this creature might be, might be higher. Another thing, uh, so um, I had this uh, s s uh, discomfort within my uh, um, within my perspective of the avatar, but there is another thing that made uh, workrooms and working within Oculus maybe not that easy, maybe not that seamless, is the thing that... This is, this is something that was said by a founder, founder and product lead of Horizon Workrooms. Uh, he said that most people are not yet going to spend eight hours a day in a headset, and he said that last year, right after launching MetaQuest 2. So uh, it's because the hardware is heavy and it leaves a strike, red strike on your skin, and it makes you dizzy, and so you need to recharge it every two to three hours. So it makes it, uh, makes it not that uh, friendly to the end user. So after feeling this tension in your temples, after one hour of working with an Oculus, uh, might be better. So this led me to thought that there is time to market and technology readiness level. And you need to remember that every time you work on software or, hard or hardware or, or a platform, you need to test it. And for sure, Meta tested it many, many times. And they just wanted to be first, for example. But, uh, and there was a reason to launch it, even though it's not that comfortable to use. But uh, if we are not a huge company like this, it's better to test it many, many times and try to improve the technology as much uh, because it reduces risks. And the risk was that uh, uh, when, they launched, when they launched MetaQuest 2 last year, they predicted that half million users are going to use it daily, uh, monthly. So they would have monthly average users at the level of nearly half million people, and actually it was 200,000, so it was 40% only from their predictions. So, yeah, they lost uh, a lot. Maybe you remember this hardware, 
and uh, that was a Google Glass, and they had the same issues, so issues with battery level, uh, the device were getting hot when using it, and it's, uh, it was very pricely, uh, battery capacity was bad, and there were some health and selfie, health and safety concerns when it comes to the usage. So again, headache, tension in temples, uh, dizziness, and etc. There are strong opinions that this is the end of metaversum, but I think that's probably they'll they are going to. Uh, get up from the ashes, but Business Insider said that Metaverse uh, is, it was three years old and it's sad to say goodbye to the solution we hardly know. But uh, let's see, let's wait, because um, if they make the headsets lighter and the setup even easier, who knows? But for sure, there are some uh, there are some solutions coming up, like this Starline project, who which are showing us that the things we really want, so uh, feeling to this closeness to the person we are talking, uh, a real thing without using the headset and additional glasses and additional software uh, you have to put, uh, hardware you have to put on you. And this is a Google AR solution based on uh, AI that creates the depth around the person you are talking to. So it's a display system. You can probably in the future put in your house and call the closest ones, or your uh, uh, your colleague or business partner, and have this feeling that this person is in front of you. We'll see. It's a new thing, but for sure, seamless, uh, as they promise. We'll see. Uh, so that was that was the story and the short analysis uh, of what's working within Metaversum is. And this is the full article. And here, shout out to Bartosz Nowosielski, who organized all the experiments. Uh, and I encourage you to read it, uh, because this is the whole explanation of the, of the experiments and its outcomes. And this is it. Thank you for being here, listening to me.